Hi, my name is Joan Ruffgarden, and I'm the author of a new novel, Ram 2050, right here. And this novel is a retelling of the classic Indian epic, the Ramayana, set in the year 2050. And what this novel portrays is a, a universe in which people and animals function together as part of a common moral community. Of course, people and animals are not the same. They don't have the same capabilities, but they nonetheless have the same standing because they help each other and are united in common causes. The main plot of the Ramayana is that the hero has a wife who is kidnapped by a villain and Ram, together with his allies among the birds and monkeys, is able to rescue his wife. Now the Ramayana is an ancient Indian epic that was that dates back to 500 BC and over the millennia it's been um, retold in uh, drama and art, uh, both with, with sculptures and pictures, all the time. And I think of the Ramayana as a hybrid between, uh, as, as similar to a hybrid between the Bible and Shakespeare. The Ramayana is, the, the story and the plot of the Ramayana is part of Indian society and society throughout Southeast Asia, just the way Shakespeare is in Western civilization. But also, the hero of the Ramayana, Ram, is the incarnation of the great Vishnu, the great Hindu god Vishnu, and as a result, he has divine capabilities. Now, when I've reset the Ramayana in the future, I've endowed Ram with superhuman capabilities, not from any divine connection, but because I'm assuming and portraying him as genetically engineered. And I'm assuming that in the year 2050, that would be possible to do. And in particular, he's engineered to have a share of his genome drawn from a sample of non-human primates. This endows him with the capability of speaking and, and intuiting animal a conversation in animal society to begin with. And in the plot, uh, the way the plot unfolds is that uh, Ram is banished uh, from his palace and then must go to live in the forest. In Ram 2050, I have uh, national, uh, multinational companies uh, substituting for the kingdoms of the Ramayana and the CEOs of those companies substituting for the kings in the Ramayana. And, and in general, I've tried to find uh, contemporary institutions to substitute for the ancient institutions of the Ramayana. So Ram and his wife are banished uh, to the forests. And I've located the forests that they're banished to as being in Hawaii, which is where I happen to live. And when they're here, uh, they develop, as a research project, the capability of talking to animals. And they didn't have that ability before arriving here. But they use their time in banishment to, uh, to learn how to do that. And then when, kid, when Sita, his, Ram's wife, is kidnapped, uh, Ram is able to call upon his ability to communicate with animals to enlist uh, them as allies. And so together with his allies, to end his brother in particular as well, he flies to Panama. Uh, and in Panama, uh, he uh, gets to meet and, uh, a number of monkeys, including a vervet monkey whose name is Hanuman. And together with Hanuman and the other monkeys, they fly on to the Caribbean and uh, chase down the villain who turns out to have a hideaway in uh, the offshore platform called the Seba Bank near St. Eustatius. And after battles, uh, the Ram and his allies defeat the, uh, the villain. Now, an interesting feature of the Ramayana is that 
the moral clarity of Rom, the hero, gradually erodes as the plot unfolds. And by the end, he's no longer the exemplary person that we've come to know at the beginning. And anyone retelling the Ramayana has to account for this change in Ram's character. And I've addressed that in connection with the violence that Ram has to experience during the course of his uh, victory against the evil villain. So the, on the whole, the, the Ramayana has proved to be uh, a complex tapestry and it involves complicated, multi-dimensional characters, and it offers a setting in which we can envision uh, a future where there's cooperation between humans and animals. And as a, as a work of science fiction, it's nice to think that this is actually a possible world and not a pure fantasy. So I hope you enjoy this. This is, it's been great fun to, to uh, write this novel and I hope very much that it's a good read for you. Thank you for listening.